People are always surprised that there's a school here. We have people here from all over the world. Some of them have been here for many generations and some of them are just newly arrived. We always have between 15 and 20 different first languages amongst our children. The fact that we don't have a school uniform and the fact that um, children call teachers by their first names is very much part of our ethos. There is an informality about it, there is a family feel about it and that's something that um, a lot of parents and, and children when they come into the school immediately like, they immediately feel drawn in and that's what we aim to, to produce, We're a very welcoming atmosphere. My name is Joanne and I come from Portugal. My name is Angela and I come from China. My name is Jenny and I come from Congo. We're going to play a game and it's called Stand Up. And I'm going to say stand up if you agree with my statement. Diversity and citizenship and emotional literacy are very closely linked. Without emotional literacy, you cannot really, I think, create responsible citizens. Stand up if you belong to a family. <laughs> Stand up if you have a family from Africa. <laughs> what I want from Circle Time is for the children to gain a sense of ownership in the process of listening to one another and responding to each other's ideas. My mum's going to this um, meeting and a girl's coming to um, look after me. I'm just a bit nervous. Just forget about your worries and enjoy it because it's like one nice time when your mum's not there and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I think it's really, really important that you use role play because role play enables children to really emotionally engage in different feelings and play with those different feelings, which is essential in an emotional literacy space, which circle time is. Stand up if you have the right to belong to each other. Gaining self-respect is absolutely key to being a good citizen. Without self-respect, how can you respect others? You know, without loving yourself, how can you love others? Prejudices and racism are caused through people's insecurities and self and lack of understanding of others. So it's absolutely key that we do lots of role play, that we do lots of assertiveness and awareness of self and others for that reason. We are going to have a class council meeting for preparing our school councillors for tomorrow's school council. What does school council want us to think about? A welcome pack. A welcome pack. Would you like to ask the children? What would they like in the welcome pack? Here, we can make a map of the school so they know where the toilets and the other things are. Megan? Megan. Well, I think we should put um, photos of all of us in the welcome pack with our names on us so they know what we all look like. I think they understand about democracy quite a lot, actually. It's a surprise, actually, how much, especially at this age. They sort of feel it's very important for them to, you know, have a voice in it. They participate more in, into it because it was part of the class idea. I think we should make our own jack-in-the-box and then we can, like, and then we can get a piece of cardboard and write welcome and then them put a key on the back and when the new boy turns the key it'll just pop out and then he'll and then he'll see it and he'll have a nice surprise <laughs> <laughs> Lunches were very unsatisfactory in the past. We did a lot of consultation with parents and with the children with us through the school council. They wanted it to be locally sourced and fairly traded and organic as far as possible. They wanted lots of healthy foods, lots of good salads and, and vegetables on the menu. And they wanted a few treats as well. Every week 
I, I try to think culturally when I design the menu. Today we have got a tortilla, which is a Spanish omelet with, layered with peppers and potato and cheese. We've had uh, this week uh, Thai green curry. Excuse me. We have Mexican nachos and fajitas and Chinese a lot. Lovely orange salad, isn't it? The bright colour. Thank you. We were very, very keen to make sure that the school meal was embedded in education about where food comes from, about healthy eating, and about food preparation. Okay, thank you. And a little bit of this. Parents are very welcome to come and eat lunch with their children. And of course, they have so much to contribute because they can help the children to develop social conversation, to develop good manners. Um, and that's, that's a really important thing that parents can do. At the moment, we've got 145 children. We're absolutely packed in like sardines. <laughs> well, our playground is tiny. It's not even the size of two tennis courts. And that means that children really are struggling to find their own space in play. And of course, that has an impact on the way that they respond to each other. They bump into each other, accidents happen. So they have to really learn to interact with each other in ways which, which won't cause um, accidents and tension. They do have to learn to, um, to play the kinds of games which will fit into that space. OK, shall we do the numbers again? Yeah. OK, I'm going to put my finger up and then you're going to do it together. OK? E I've been teaching um, the children Mandarin today. Um, the difference between Cantonese and Mandarin is the character is the same, but it's the pronunciation is different. When you say, um, how are you, you say in Cantonese is Lei Ho, but in Mandarin you say Ni Hao. How old are you? Ni Ji Shui. Ni Ji Shui. Mandarin is going to be spoken widely in the world in future, so I think it's very important that children actually start learning now and um, equip themselves with something that is going to be very important in their life. We're going to go over the last two things we talked about last week, which were the welcome pack and the lunch rules. Have you all had the discussion in your classes? All the pack should be in a nice box to take home. A sort of jack in the box with welcome on it. We have class representatives on the school council in every class, even the reception children. We've got a couple of four-year-olds who've just come into the school and in their first week they've been elected to the school council. She might be a very good person to ask to draw the picture for the welcome pack box. The school council meets once a fortnight and we discuss um, issues that the children raise and issues that we want to consult them on. Did you talk in your classes at all about how it feels to be new at the school? I felt a bit lonely when I first came to the school. It's because I didn't know anybody. When Millie first came to the school in foundation, she always stayed with the teacher and she still does. And okay. what would help with that to make her feel more confident? Uh, I, uh, I asked to play with her, but she said she's always tired. Visits, uh, I see, is uh, very important um, when a child is starting school. It enables the child and the parents to get to know the teachers in a very familiar context. This afternoon we're going to visit um, a child who lives in Chinatown, which is um, down to the south of Soho. 
just going along to the home, meeting the child in the home, we gain so much knowledge that we wouldn't get if we just had them first straight away into school. How are you? Fine. It also gives us a chance to start building up our relationship with parents, which is very important at this stage. It's really nice to meet Edward before, we, before he starts school and, uh, you know, find out a little bit about him. What kind of things do you yeah. like to do at home, Edward? I like to play with my cars. Oh, could you show us your cars? We ask the parents the, the basic questions that we need to ask about allergies and food and all of those sort of things that, that, that are really important. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a conversation about um, the child's likes, dislikes, things he's particularly interested in, um, enthusiasms, um, so that we can plan a curriculum that really will suit him when he comes into school. I hope you know, he, he can get used to the school system. Very, very um, different. Isn't very it? different. Yeah. So, um, well, we, I mean, we try and make it quite play based. So, a lot of what he'll be doing yeah. will be similar activities to, to what he's right. been doing before. But um, also, you know, there'll be some more structured learning activities oh, and um, hopefully he'll enjoy them. Seems to be quite keen on his letters. <laughs> Sammy. We've introduced um, a lot of extended school activities, after school clubs, and we've tried to introduce things that we feel will reflect and meet the needs of our diverse community. So for example, we've got a, a, now got a Chinese and martial arts club which runs, which is very popular. We try to um, ensure that children develop values of respect for each other and for each other's cultures, that they have a chance to explore their own identity and, and, and those of others. And this builds their, their self-esteem. And so the, the cookery clubs are part of that, and Anita is absolutely committed to making that a reality. You have done such a marvellous job. We're making Thai fish cake. When we finish cooking, then we're going to take them home and eat them. Mm. We do it after school from 3.30 to 5.30 on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday. It's okay. I wish you could have it every day. I know. Delicious! Diversity is about embracing every child's and every family's qualities. Every day there's something new, every day there's something exciting, and the children are just so rewarding to work with. I think it's a really good school, this school, and I don't ever want to, to leave it.